Well, everybody, I'm back and I'm excited about my show. And I know what you're saying, Constance, you're always exciting. That's good, isn't it? That's a vibration. So uh, I am excited about my guest. We have a baller in the house, y'all. That's my Southern accent of, of saying we have a, just an expert in the house. I've interviewed her before. Uh, Christy Whitman has been a transformational leader, celebrity coach, and law of attraction expert for the past 23 years. And y'all, if you've seen this on video, she looks 23, so how is that possible? <laughs> as well as the uh, two-time New York Times bestselling author of The Art of Having It All. We all desire that. And training your alpha bitch. And uh, she is also the author of the international bestseller, The Desire Factor and Quantum Success. And today we're going to be talking about the desire factor. I've met her in person. Y'all, she's the real deal. She's real down to earth. And you can connect with her really easy, even though she coaches celebrities. And she has appeared on so many TV and radio shows. Well, let me give you some. The Morning Show, TEDx. Uh, the Hallmark Channel, the Next Level Soul podcast, and she's been featured in Goldcast, People Magazine, you name it. You see who she is. <laughs> and she's here today to help you and to share revelation, insight, motivation, and inspiration around the desire factor. So the one and only Miss Christy Whitman, welcome back to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Thank you, Constance. It's always a pleasure to be with you. <laughs> so what's what's been going on, Christy? Oh, you know, just I'm I'm being the messenger for the council. So I'm just helping a lot of people move from contrast into what they do want. And, you know, I'm raising two uh, now teenage boys. I and wow. yeah, so their kids are getting big and you know, life is good. So so how old are your kids now? I remember when they were younger. <laughs> they were they were little. Yeah, they're 13 and 14 now. Wow, so interesting. Yeah. So let's delve right into it. I've been reading your book, um, The Desire Factor, and that's such an interesting title. And it's the book about the alignment of energy. Tell our listeners just what is the basic nature of the book? And then I have a ton of questions. Perfect. So mm -hmm. this, for, for me, you know, starting out doing my own interpersonal work about 28 years ago, there wasn't a lot of books on how do you manifest? There wasn't a lot of information out there. We didn't have the internet, right? Mm -hmm. So as my work has evolved and I've brought through information on the seven essential laws and how do you manifest and how, you know, obviously the secret came out and there's a lot more information. Everybody's talking about law of attraction. There's a seven step process of how actually, energy sets itself up and how we as the conduit for energy needs to work with the energy. And so the council brought through that there are these seven principles and it's literally how energy flows. And think of it like a uh, padlock. You know, if you have a, a, if you have a lock and you get mm -hmm. the number, numbers out of sequence, the lock won't open. So there's a lot of people that are doing these processes or might even be knowing these principles, but they have them out of order. And then they're frustrated because their manifestations are not coming into fruition or they're taking too long or they're, you know, it's, it's taking them a while to get through the contrast or the negative emotion. So these are the seven principles that are outlined within the desire factor and really what desires are. I mean, desires are a gift given to us from the multidimensionality of who we are, from the higher part of who we are. And we get to be the receivers of that and then the benefit beneficiary of it when we have it. And desires are really there to help us grow, to help us expand. It's never about the end desire. It's about who we become in the process. Although the end desire, whether it's the house or the guy or the, you know, the car or the business or the money or whatever it is, feels good. But it's always about the journey getting there. And how do we enjoy the journey where most people are thinking it's got to be that thing in order for me to feel when you can actually feel having it and feel the fulfillment of it way before it ever comes. 
That's amazing because you have managed to share with our listeners just some stuff and the life that you have manifested. And she's so right on listeners because I was just telling the client the other day, it's about who you becoming. Nobody wants to hear that because yes. once you get what you thought you wanted, it's never what you thought, you know, it, it, it should be. So right. tell some the, the listeners just a little bit of the things and stuff that you've manifested over the years. Yeah, well, I've, I mean, I've manifested my dream partner. I've been with mm -hmm. him for 17 years. We have two children together. You know, that was a big manifestation. I mean, I, I live in Scottsdale, Arizona in a beautiful, uh, beautiful dream home. I've manifested dream cars and multiple houses, actually. Um, vacations, my business. Wow. I mean, you know, to be able to do what I do and to be able to create such an abundance in helping people, um, that was a manifestation because I wasn't, you know, I didn't have that at the time. I was a pharmaceutical sales rep, not living mm. with pur purpose or passion. I made good money, but I didn't have much passion. I certainly wasn't on purpose. So that was a manifestation. Uh, there's been other things that contrast has brought into my life, like my 13 year old son, when he was two months of age, he was rushed to the hospital and had to have open heart surgery. Huh. And in that time, I looked at my husband and I said, we've got to focus on what we want. We got to focus on seeing him growing older and having fun and being healthy. And now he's a 13 year old boy. He's a star of his soccer team. You know, he's elite soccer player, a straight A student, just a smart Alec, which I love. And, <laughs> you know, he's just, he's just a great kid. They both, both of them are. So, I mean, my body, you know, wealth, I mean, it, it's just on and on with these, knowing these principles and being able to apply them is absolutely key for anything that we want to manifest in our lives. I love that. And I just wanted you to share that because your last chapter says it was never about the desire. It's about the expansion. So let's start with principle number one. What is that one? That's all about alignment. So alignment, meaning we want something that we want. And a lot of times someone will want something, but then they feel like they can't have it. They doubt themselves. They worry about it. They get into a place of feeling negative emotion instead of aligning with it. So our consciousness, meaning what we say, our words are important. That's mm -hmm. why I created a whole free program. You can go to watchyourwords.com because there are certain words and phrases that we use as human beings that are based in lack. And when we use them, when we're saying them, we're pushing against, we're repelling what we want to us. So aligning our words, our thoughts, our emotions, our perspective, the images, the pictures that we hold in our mind. And then of course, the actions, the behaviors, the, the habits that we do, those need to be in alignment. We need to feel the alignment with what we want. That's principle number one. And so when people are like, let's just talk about money. That's the number one question that I get. If someone is listening and they're really struggling financially, so their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions, their images need to be aligned with I, I, I am abundant. I am prosperous. Is that what you're saying, Chris? Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's interesting because I know a lot of people, including I went through this myself, that either had money but then they look into their future and they worry, well, I've got enough for now, but I'm not going to have enough for 10 years or 20 years down the road. And so they start to worry. And so even you could have, and I've coached them, you could have multimillionaires that still will worry and fret about having money or that they're going to lose it. And that worry energy just creates a drain of money or repels more money coming to them. So if someone's in a situation where they're struggling, that they don't have a job, they don't know how to make enough money, or they're living day to day, or, you know, there's a vibration there. There's a very different vibration than lack, than abundance. So let's just talk about this really quick, because okay. this is really important, because this is not only just law of attraction, this is based on the law of sufficiency and abundance. Most people are in lack, focused on what they don't have, what they're worried about not having in the future. And that brings out an emotion, a state of being that doesn't feel good. And it ranges, right? The, it could be worry, doubt, fear, anger, resentment, disappointment, mm -hmm. sadness, powerlessness. All of that 
is coming from a place of lack, which does not feel good. So if someone is feeling on any subject, if they're feeling bad as they are thinking about or relating with that subject, whatever it is, money in this case, if they feel bad, they are sending out vibrations that are low level and will continue to create more of the same. They need to move up the vibrational scale. So that's the first bucket is lack. Lack always feels bad. The second bucket, if you will, is neutrality. This is where compassion comes in. This is where uh, peace, calm, being neutral, right? Finding harmony. And a lot of times it's like when you're in lack, it's hard to go from lack all the way to abundance. That's why most people feel like I'm trying to think abundantly. I'm trying to feel abundantly, but it's so hard to do that when I'm stuck over here because the art of compassion, feeling that compassion for yourself about where you've been, not feeling sorry for yourself, feeling that compassion energy neutralizes you so that when you're in compassion, you're not judging, you're not criticizing, you're not feeling the lack and the fear. You're feeling not yay over the moon, but at least you're not feeling bad. And that's really where satisfaction comes in, the sufficiency, the law of sufficiency and abundance. So feeling that where I am right now, I'm alive. I've got a roof over my head. I've got food in my belly. I've got air in my lungs. Okay. This moment is enough. I have mm. compassion for myself that I don't have all I want and need, but that compassion energy keeps you neutralized. Once you're in that compassion energy, then that's the doorway that opens up the doorway to abundance, which is the third bucket. That's where the emotions of excitement and joy and passion and purpose and love and abundance and success and freedom and all those well-being, all of those good feeling emotions come. You can't get from there, lack, over to abundance. You have to inch your way up. And so that's the way to do it is through compassion. Once you're neutralized, then you can start to focus on what do I want? And start listing it out. What do I want? Well, I don't want this. No, we're not focusing mm -hmm. on what you don't want because that's going to bring more feelings of lack. So when you hear yourself saying and focusing on what you don't want, think about what the opposite is. The opposite of what I don't want is what I do want. I don't want to give an example. I don't want to be late in traffic. I don't want to be stuck in traffic. What do I want? Well, I want clean open roads right? I don't want to get a divorce. I don't want my person to leave me. I don't want to be in debt anymore. What do you want? I want to have a flow of money. I want to stay in this relationship. I want my relationship to improve. What is the what you want? What do you want? Why do you want it? Because that then creates and evokes the emotions, which emotions are the key to attracting what you want. So what do I want? Why do I want it? And then eventually the third question is, how do I want to feel? Because all of it is about vibration. And when you're in a feeling state, even when you could be, and I've done this before, I've been hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and deliberately changed my vibration by attuning to what would it feel like to be free? What would it feel like to be financially free? And cultivating that. I shared earlier, Constance, that when I was a pharmaceutical sales rep, I didn't feel passion and purpose for what I was doing. I felt like drained every time I walked out of the house. And so I, I knew about law of attraction at that point and the law of sufficiency and abundance. So I said, okay, I'm in lack right now with my career. I'm feeling lack of purpose, lack of passion. So I need to then cultivate that and neutralizing ourselves to that. I was able to find what am I satisfied here? What, you know, I'm okay. I make good money. Great. I have very flexible hours. Okay, great. Like finding the good, finding the positive aspects about where you're at. Then I started cultivating the feeling, even though I didn't know it, I started pretending, imagining, cultivating that feeling of passion and purpose. And it was within a very short period of time. It was with less than a month. All of a sudden my book, my very first book, Perfect Pictures, literally downloaded through me. I got the book published. 
started speaking in spiritual bookstores and churches. People started asking me to coach. I didn't know what coaching was. Mm -hmm. It was a long time ago. And I started coaching them on the phone and I loved the process. I had so much passion for that and I felt so on purpose. So I kept leaning into that and got my certification in coaching and continued, continued until in 2008, I started certifying coaches through law of attraction, through the quantum success coaching Academy. I kept leaning in and that gave even more passion and purpose to see other people learning what I do to help others affect change in other people's lives. And it kept growing and growing and growing. And now what I do and everything that I do in my business, whether I'm writing or I'm speaking or I'm doing an interview or I'm coaching or I'm healing or I'm channeling, whatever I'm doing, I am fully in my purpose and passion. So if I can do that with my career, where I certainly did not feel that I was in lack, and now all that is birthed from that, because I continue that momentum by aligning with it. Anybody can do that with money, with relationships, with their bodies, with any subject. You know, we could drop the mic on that one. And y'all, this is just principle number one. See, you just <laughs> reminded me, you really, God has really given you the gift of breaking down principles so that people can understand, apply and use them in their everyday life. It's very, very powerful. And I, I, I appreciate you sharing your own personal experiences because sometimes when people see, you know, people like you and myself, they're like, oh, they have a perfect life. I'm like, honey, I could tell you some stuff that would make you cry and get on your knees and pray. But you're so right. And this book is so needed so that people, it's like a roadmap of how people can align. So what's the second principle Um Christy. The second principle is focus. And okay. that is where it's all about our mind. So we, we kind of went from alignment a little bit into that focus because mm -hmm. it's when our mind is focused on what we want and why we want it and how we want to feel, right? So focus is if you're looking at and you're focused on something that you don't want, you're going to get more of the same. So alignment with the energy and focusing your consciousness. Again, your consciousness is what you say, what you think, what you picture in your mind, what you feel and what you do. That is so simple, but it's so profound. I remember I interviewed somebody um, and he said, the big secret is if you focus it in on what you don't want, you're going to get more of that. And that's exactly what you just said. And and the example that you gave about money and love and, and the job is just so awesome. So what's the third principle? The third principle is the principle of, um, of joyful expectancy, right? I love so, that. Yes, because think about this, right? If we're in this gap of, okay, I'm going to focus. I don't have enough money, but I'm having compassion. I know now what I want. I want the flow of money. I want the flow of abundance, right? So we're here feeling good, thinking about it and focusing on it. But the reality is the money hasn't come yet, mm -hmm. right? We don't have the man or the woman in our bed yet. We don't live in the great dream house. We don't have that career yet that has passion and purpose. So there's a gap. There's always going to be a gap between what we want and where we are and what we want. And so to fill in that gap with joyful expectancy, that's the energy that will help it flow and bridge that gap. So I'll give an example. Okay. When I was my last days in corporate America, before I quit my day job and went full-time in my coaching business, I was a uh, sales training manager for a biotech company. <laughs> and during that time, I would go, I no longer had that flexibility that I had when I was a pharmaceutical rep. Mm -hmm. I had to be there from eight to five. And I had a boss who was all over me. We called him Eagle because he was like always watching everything we did and, mm -hmm. you know, backstabbing coworkers and the whole thing. So I had to bridge the gap from finding what were the positive aspects and joyfully expecting what my business or what my life or my career would look like when it was in full bloom with coaching. And I wasn't there yet, right? So there's that gap. 
So every day I would get into my car, I would think about the positive aspects. Okay, I've got my own office, I can close the door. I've got a couple friends that I can go grab tea with during the day. I'm making really good money. I have nights and weekends off so that I can coach my clients. You know, I would literally list out, I live 20 minutes away from home so I can get a break and go see my dogs or, you know, go, go to lunch at my apartment or my condo if I want to. So there was all these different things that I would list out. I get to be creative in what I'm doing. I'm learning how to create programs, which is what I eventually wanted to do as a coach. And so there was so many different positive aspects that I would list. And then after I was done listing the, the positive aspects of where I was, because remember there's where we are and then where we want to go. After I came made peace with where I was, I then would get excited thinking about where I was going. Wow. Someday soon, I'm going to be my own boss. I'm not going to have this boss. That's good. I'm going to have, I'm going to have, I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to be able to work when I want to work. I'm going to be able to work out when I want to work out. I'm going to be able to have my hours be what I want them to be. If I want to work at three o'clock in the morning, I can work at three o'clock in the morning. If I want to sleep in and work, start work at 10, I can do that. I'm going to be able to make as much money as I want. I'll be able to do my job wherever in the world. I could be in traveling. I could be on a cruise ship and coach a client. So I would think about the end result, bridging that gap. The starting point where I was not being in dissatisfaction and this sucks, but this will be so great. I found the positive aspects and then I joyfully expected, I joyfully anticipated where I was going. So that's principle number three is bridging that's so that gap. so good. But it, made, <laughs> it made me think of a verse in the Bible that, that, it all, that has always, I'm like, what does that mean? And this, it says, rejoice and be joyful, O barren one, you who, who have not manifested. I'm like, well, why should I be joyful? And barren means empty. And so what you just said is rejoiceful, being grateful, you, not, not in denial about where you are, but looking at the good. That yes. is so, that gap and how to feel that, Christy, is so needed and so powerful. It is so powerful and it's what bridges the gap. It shortens the gap because a lot of times when we're in that negativity, we lengthen the gap. It's like, when the hell is he going to come? When the hell am I going to get mm -hmm. the money? Why is it taking so long? Right? So we feed, we have to remember that we're always, you know, we're energy receivers, we are energy containers and we're energy transmitters and the energy we're transmitting out when we're in lack, if we're feeling bad, we're projecting that. It's like we're paving that mm -hmm. road in front of us with more lag. But if we're just stopping and going, okay, compassion for what has been, let me look at the positive aspects. Like I said, I've got a roof over my head, I've got food mm -hmm. in my belly, I've got water to drink, I've got a job, I, you know, I've got whatever it is. Find, you can always find negative aspects, but you can always find positive aspects. Both exist. This is the law of polarity. We live in duality, right? So if there's negative, there also is positive. And that bridges the gap and it shortens the gap. So good. So powerful. Okay. So what's the next principle? So the fourth Number principle four. is the principle of having. And this mm. is a really important one. Because when we are aware that we're in lack of something, we feel bad. But when we feel the having of it, right, we feel good. And whatever we want, it doesn't matter what it is. We think we're projecting that I'm going to feel this way when I get it, right? I'm going to feel happy when I get that. I'm going to feel joy. I'm going to feel relieved. I'm going to feel powerful. I'm going to feel passionate. Whatever that emotion is, we are taking what is the now present time where emotions exist and projecting it onto something. How many times have we said, hey, when I get this, I'll feel, we get it and we go, hmm, that didn't do it. So we go, hey, if I make this amount of money, I'm going to feel too. good. And we get there and we go, no, that didn't quite do it. I, I remember years ago in 2013, my one of my books uh, hit the New York Times. And I worked really hard to make sure that it did. And I you know, was doing all different strategies. And for years before that, I was feeling into 
what it would feel like to be a New York Times bestselling author, right? And so I we accomplished it and I got there and it was like, ooh, for a minute, yay. And then nothing changed. It was like, I thought the whole world was going to just, I don't know if a parade was going to go through my house or money was going to flow. I don't know what, I don't know what the, I thought yeah. was going to happen, but nothing changed. And then I felt down after that, this thing that I put on this pedestal of someday I'll finally be came. And I, that, that whatever I thought I would be, I was still the same person. I remember my kids were in a double stroller at the time. So they were two, maybe, maybe two and three. And I reached down to them and I'm like, mommy became a New York Times bestselling <laughs> author. And they're looking at me like drool, you know, just like, <laughs> who cares? I mean, nothing changed. And that was even like, God, I put so much stock in that, that it's like, it was, it was disappointing afterwards because what I thought was going to happen, what I was projecting to happen felt empty. I mean, how many times have we done that? Oh, when I meet the man. I know that. I know that feeling. So, yeah. Kristen, was that because you were already in the vibration of I have it now? Yes. And so it sort of uh, diminished the what we what we might consider to be, oh, my God, be because you've been in that vibration. It had become normal to you. Exactly. It, it had become normal to me, but I didn't realize at that time is that I was having it. I was wearing it. I was breathing mm -hmm. it. I was doing it. That's how I accomplished it, right? That's how I attracted it. Not only the work that I did, but that's how I succeeded in that. And yet the, the last part of it, the next principle is the principle of loving it, right? And that love is the strongest vibe on the planet. And so when you can have something and you feel the success of it, then you turn up the volume to that and you love what that success feels like. Now it's not based on that one thing giving you that. Now you are vibing out. So you have successes or whatever the emotion is. You have it, you're, you're like a beacon, not just to that one thing, but to all things because you're revving up your energy by loving, loving your life, loving the experience, loving the emotion, loving the vibration, loving all things about it. Love is the connector between our higher divine world and our physical third dimensional world. So good. Thank you. <laughs> so good. I mean, you're breaking it down, my sister, I tell you. <laughs> and so if somebody, you know, I'm just you, I'm just responding to some of the emails that I get from all over the world. So if people would just say, well, you know, I want that, but I love my life. I'm grateful for what I do have. I'm grateful for my dog. She just threw up. Yo, I know too much information. I'm grateful for my dog. I'm grateful for my friends that I do have. So if they're loving their life, that puts them in that love energetic flow and it attracts all kinds of things to them. Exactly. Love, yeah. love, so it, love is such a... Uh... You know, it's that feeling when you're in love, it seems like you just want to skip and, you know, everything <laughs> feels great. The sun is shining. You know, it's like we don't have to just have that in love feeling with a person. We can have that with all aspects. I, I get in love with a sunset or a sunrise, yeah. you know, or the ocean or seeing a, a roadrunner run across my car. I'm like, wow, I'm, I just love it. Or a bunny, you know, or my dog or my kids or there's so much to love. So true. So good. What's the next principle? Guys, you, you already know you've got to get this book. <laughs> and that she's going to give you that info because when when uh, your assistant sent me a copy, I'm like, whoa, this is powerful because I, I'm I'm like a small baby step analytical. Let's show people how kind of girl, not just the generalities. And you certainly do this. You certainly do that in this book. So so what's the sixth principle? So the sixth principle is the principle of surrender. So that's mm. where you've done all this, you're in this space of love, and maybe you notice again that it hasn't come or something contrasting happens, right? And it's to be able to surrender that. Any feelings of disbelief that I have about this happening, I surrender it. I surrender it to the universe. I surrender the energy that I have pushing up against this contrast or this thing. 
I surrender that. It's a neutralizer once again. Surrendering allows us to go, I don't know the how, I surrender the how. It's a it's a sense of detachment. Again, for years, I mean, over 20 years, I've been talking about the seven essential laws. And the law of detachment is so important to manifesting what we want, because if we're having any anxiety, any negative emotions, any stress, any push against, that's what we need to surrender. And so there's even processes within the book at the end of each book, on how to work with each of the principles and how to even take a desire that you have and take it through the entire processes, the entire process of the manifestation of the desire factor and each of the different, you know, things you can ask yourself and do and surrender is so key. So it is trusting the universe or trusting God that uh, that the spirit wants our highest good to come into our lives. That, that is trust a factor or a partner with surrendering. It's a huge part. You know, um, one of the things that when the council first came through me, um, they wanted me to create, and we did, and we taught, taught this for years and it's still available, a program called Quantum Energy Mastery. Mm -hmm. It's how do we master our own energy? Because whatever is happening in the universe, it's up to us to master our own thoughts, our emotions, whatever we're pushing against, it's important. And one of the first important powers that we have as human beings is faith. Our, mm -hmm. our, our third eye is our faith portal. And as we are, if you think about it, it's like we are always looking at something that we're putting our faith in. If we are in lack, we're putting our faith in our, the lack happening. We're putting our faith in more of what we don't want to come. And so think of it like a, you know, like a, a light, light, um, what they call it, flashlight. Mm -hmm. Like where, where are you focusing your energy when you're focusing on what you don't want? You're putting your faith in the divine not providing or God or goddess not, or the universe not providing. So you're putting your faith in more struggle or drama. We can't get more faith, but we can focus it. And when we're focusing our faith truly on what we want, and then we find that alignment and we feel good, the universe gives us more of that. The universe is not like, you know, I really like Constance. So I'm <laughs> going to give Constance all the good in the world. And, you know, I'm not too favorable on Christy. So we're going to give her just a bunch of crap right? It doesn't work like that. We're all mm -hmm. infinitely loved. We're all meant to be here. We all have a purpose. We all chose to come into this experience. We all have a divine partner that we're partnering with. If we're here, we're alive. How do we know? We're thinking, we're breathing, our heart's beating. So all of us have the ability to be supported by the divine in what we do want. But we are in a cooperative component to that. We have to get ourselves in tune with receiving and allowing what it is that we want. And our faith and where we focus is one of those indicators. So even when we're focused and we're having faith that in doubt, right? It's like the opposite of faith is doubt. When we're doubting what we want, we got to surrender that doubt. And come back into faith. You're a master at teaching. I tell you, <laughs> I, you. I, I love I it. That. I love it. And, and so lastly, the principle of action. Yes. So important. Okay. So we are the eyes, the ears, the legs, the feet, the hands. We are of the divine. And, and when we are in partnership, it's us that has to do the interview, write the email, pick up the phone, you know, go into that, do that thing, get on that stage, you know, row the boat, whatever the action re is required of us, we're the ones that have to take it. And so it doesn't mean that we take action all the time. So we're overwhelmed and, you know, just feeling like we're spread too thin when you're following this alignment. And you're focused and you're joyfully expecting and you're feeling the having and you're loving the having and you're surrendering everything or anything that's not the having of it, then the action that we take will be one of inspired action. It'll be one of flow. It will feel good to take that action. Even if that action, and I write about this in the book, because there was a couple of actions that I was 
guided to take that I took and that particular action didn't turn out the way I thought it should have. And it's like, hey, what's the deal? But anytime we're taking an action, anytime we're in inaction, nothing can happen. And when we do take an action, we may not know that that action has a equal reaction to doors opening, to to opportunities coming, to things flowing in. We may not know exactly what that action and what is required of ourselves in that action, what it will lead to in the next step and the next step and the next step. But following that action with, again, faith, that's the key. These steps or principles or vibrations are just so amazing. Share with us a story either from your own personal experiences or from a client who uh, tapped into these, uh, prin these principles and just manifested something amazing, astounding, remarkable. Can you think of yeah, anything? I'll, I think a lot. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> which one would I choose? Yeah, so I, I had a client who um, was in debt. Um, her parents were always in debt and she had a lot of other things going on too, but she kept struggling. And even though she ha held a really professional um, you know, career and was making really great money, the pattern was she was still in debt. And that's what she always learned. She started to follow these principles and within a month after reading the book and applying these principles, she was able to get herself out of debt and she has stayed out of debt for the first time in her adult life. Wow. So that's just one. For me, there, you know, I write about it in the book. There was there was something that I deeply desired and I followed the steps and everything through. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna happen. And I came really, really close and it didn't happen. As with so many people, they think this is the thing. Energy never gets wasted. Mm -hmm. And so what's amazing is that even though I was thinking my desire was on this particular thing, the energy that I was flowing because of these seven principles, I manifested what I wanted, but in a completely different area. It wasn't that particular thing. But the old, the end all be all thing that I wanted was the feeling sense. And also in this particular case, it was money. And I thought it would be through this way, but it came through other multiple other avenues. So it's, it's always about how we feel and how we flow the energy. It cannot be wasted. And sometimes, oh, I'm working so hard. I'm doing so much. Yeah. It'll, it will, if you believe it too, if you don't block it, if you surrender the doubt and the, oh, I've been working so hard and nothing's happening, things aren't turning out for me. Mm -hmm. If you let go and surrender all of that and truly have faith that I am flowing this energy, I'm focused on what I want, the divine wants for me more than I even want for myself, you'll find that it comes maybe in that, maybe in that avenue, but so many more avenues open up. And you know, your last chapter is, your conclusion is, it was never about the desire, which is where we started. And so with you sharing these principles, Christy, I, I hear expansion, uh, you know, what, what, what is it about if it's not about the desire? It's about the growth. It's about the mm -hmm. flow of energy. It's about the partnering of the life force. Because every time we feel excited about something, we feel enlivened about something, right? It's like, that's what life's all about is that, ooh, that fun, that possibility, that potential, that flow of that energy, that connection and partnership with the divine. That's what feels so good. And we as a human being assign it to a person, place, or thing, which is great to interact with that person, place, or thing. And that will come. However, it's the energy that flows to get us to that person, place, or thing. So good. Thank you. So juicy. So awesome. So, so tell our listeners and people who may be watching this, how can they get this wonderful book? What is your website? What services do you offer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Perfect. <laughs> well, I'm all, just Google me, but um, yeah, you can find the book, The Desire Factor, and many of my other books at Amazon or Barnes and Noble or any, you know, small independent bookstores as well. They can, if they don't have it in stock, they can certainly order it for you. But Amazon, I know, carries it. 
Um, you can go to christywhitman.com. That has a variety of things that I do with either myself through the Quantum Success Coaching Academy, if you're wanting to get certified as a law of attraction coach yourself, or if you're wanting to learn how to master your energy through quantum energy mastery, or if you're just wanting to know how to, you know, take all of this esoteric information we've been talking about and put it into practice, the first thing I would say is go to watchyourwords.com because it's a free 10-day program. They're small, short videos, two minutes in length that tell you what not to say, why, and what to say instead. And as you're doing the videos, I hear clients, thousands and thousands of clients tell me, oh my gosh, just watching the video and being aware of what I've been saying and shifting it, I can feel the difference. I feel better. And then they start to manifest different. Well, you know, let me just say this about you. You know, I've been interviewed everybody, almost everybody in the law attraction uh, arena. I still feel your energy. I still feel your excitement. You know, when you do a lot of interviews, you get where I'm coming from. Yeah, I, do. I, I I still feel your essence and the spirit and the excitement of what you're doing. And I just want to thank you and all of my listeners for, for you doing the inner work and offering yourself up as a channel for, for God's spirit to use you to share with the world. Thank you, Constance. That means the world to me. Thank you. I really appreciate it's, that. It's nothing but the truth. So everybody visit her website and uh, uh, get that book and, and take advantage of Watch Your Words. Is that is that it? Watch Your Words. And um, this woman is a giver. She's helped people all over the world and she's living. She is the essence of what she's teaching. Thank you so much, Christy. Everybody, I want you to share this on your timeline. Share it with your coworkers, with your friends, uh, with that person that keeps calling you and uh, asking you for advice. Send this video to them. Send this podcast to them. And uh, as I say every week, you are a powerful creator, just like Christy shared. And make a decision that this week you're going to create and manifest your best life. Have a great week, everybody.